Hey everyone, welcome back to Hey Mishka. It's fall in New York City, and after a very anxiety inducing 2020 thus far, I'm feeling very soothed by the arrival of my favorite season. I'm also feeling inspired, rejuvenated, and just motivated to get some things done that I've been putting off. I chose Productive Fall Weekend for this video because I have personally been feeling a bit overwhelmed during the week. Now, I don't think you can do a full life makeover in one weekend, but I do think you can strategically tackle a lot of different miscellaneous things and just start the week with a sense of accomplishment and some breathing room. So here are my top five tips for having a productive weekend this fall or any time really. And stick around until the end because I'm adding a bonus tip that really makes the biggest difference for me. Number one, don't make your entire weekend about productivity. By Friday, I'm usually thinking about all the catch-up I can do over the weekend instead of recharging my energy levels and forgetting about work for a while. This is one way to set yourself up for failure for next week. I don't necessarily agree with the whole five-day workweek structure we've all been adhering to since the Industrial Revolution, but I do agree that there should be at least a couple of sacred days where you don't work. And if you're planning a special productivity weekend, you can schedule that downtime as part of your productivity. If you work all weekend long, how far do you think you're getting into next week before you completely burn out? Constantly working means a steady decrease in your work performance, and that means you have more catch-up to do on the weekend. That's how years and years go by, and all we have to show for it is busy work and feeling behind. If I want to be present and engaged with and inspired by life, we have to ensure some whimsical free time is mandatory. We have to make enjoying life a part of our schedule. Number two. Create a reasonable plan for what you're going to accomplish. I've been planning out my days on these printable planner sheets I designed. I'm going to leave a link to the Hey Mishka workshop Etsy shop where you can grab one of these too. These printable pages just give me a sense of calm when I write things down, and I just write down the key things I need to remember about my day. I also love using the 90x goals planner and Asana to track what I'm doing during any given week but on productivity weekends, it helps to zoom in to those specific single days. So sit down and write out what you hope to accomplish this weekend. Don't be vague either. If you write, get my life together or feel more inspired or something vague like that, you're not gonna know what action to take to move your goal forward. Number three, do things in the order that makes the most sense. While I love sitting down and making a to-do list for the day, some days I just wake up ready to take action on something and I have to allow myself to go with that. For example, even with this vlog, my intention was to not only have a productive weekend this weekend, but to film the process. I was going to film the whole process of organizing my closet today, putting away summer clothes and taking out fall clothes, but after I came down with my coffee and saw a pile of laundry I had to put away anyway, I didn't want to set up the tripod and start filming. The clothing muse had arrived, so I decided I'm just gonna tackle this project immediately. So I just did it for the next few hours, I just got it done. And it feels amazing to jump into action in the moment you're inspired to do something. You can't really do this for everything in life, or your life would be chaos, but in this instance it's very helpful. So if the muse arrives and you're inspired to do something, don't slow yourself down by saying, oh wait, I have to make a list first. Just do what makes sense first. Number four. Stick to three main tasks for each day. Ask yourself, if I only got three things done today, what would make this day feel productive? And then curate that task list. You can break those tasks into subtasks so you actually know what steps are involved. Try to be realistic about the time each will consume, accounting for the time it takes to adjust to a new project, or things like you know eating meals and little unexpected things that might pop up throughout the day. I'm a person whose imagination and optimism is usually louder than my logic, so I think I'm unstoppable with the sheer force of will I can do these 10 major things today, and I forget how long each of those items will really take, not to mention the energy levels required for each one. Then I feel discouraged when I'm editing something three hours later and I no longer have time for the epic to-do list that I made. But really, I should have started off more rationally in the first place. Number five, plan a day that works for you, not against you. This is another tip that requires some self-awareness. How do you function best? If you're a person who can do one thing for long stretches of time, you might wanna batch those common tasks together so that you can accomplish them all in one go. But if you're someone who gets bored easily or can't focus on one thing for a long time, you might want to mix up your day. 
I definitely have days where I like to stay ultra focused on one task for a long time. For example, if there's an intense project or it's deadline week, but I prefer days where I can mix things up or else I start to feel sort of stuck and unhealthy. Finally, it's bonus tip time. Since it's fall, my bonus tip is to create a cozy seasonal atmosphere when you're trying to get things done. I'm a very sensory, visual, right brain creative person, so having an atmosphere is just as important to me as having ink in my pen. You can create an atmosphere with things like delicious smelling candles, fall decorations, which could be anything from dried flowers to fairy lights or pumpkins or whatever makes you happy. I also like to play a soothing playlist in the background. You can also put on some huge cozy cardigan and some slippers and really settle into your workspace. Fall is my favorite time to be productive, dream really big, create new goals, and access my full potential as a writer and a freelancer and a mentor. So having this atmosphere really keeps me in the zone. So those are my tips for having a productive fall weekend. I hope that you find some of these helpful and that they help you plan your next weekend to be as productive and fulfilling as possible. Here's to an inspiring creative fall ahead. Don't forget to subscribe and drop me a comment if you do like productivity related content. I always have tips to share around juggling all of these different roles.